solving a three-variable system of equations using elimination. To solve a three-variable system with three equations, we have two main methods. One is the substitution method and one is the elimination method. In this video, I will do the elimination method. Overall, what you want to do is choose one variable to eliminate. You will eliminate that variable in a set of two equations and a second set of two equations. Once you've done that, you will be left with only two variables and two equations, and you can solve using one of the methods you know. So let's get started. I will start by labeling my equations A, B, and C simply to help me keep my work organized. When I look at these three equations, I want to see what variable do I think I could eliminate most easily in all three equations, even though I'm going to be doing two at a time. You can choose whatever you want, but I'm going to choose x. So I'm going to eliminate x in equations a and b, and I'm going to eliminate x in equations a and c. I could have done b and c, but I see that there's already an additive inverse with x and negative x, so that will be even faster. I've copied down equations a and b, but I multiplied equation a by negative 2 all the way across in order to create an additive inverse to cancel out my x's. When I add these two equations together, my x's cancel. I get negative 3y plus 7z equals 5. Now I'm going to copy over equations a and c. Again, I could have copied b and c, but since there is already an additive inverse, I'm going to copy a and c to speed up my process. When I add these two equations together, I get 4y minus c equals 10. Notice that I had to choose to eliminate the same variable in both sets of equations so that I'd be left with a system that has the same two variables left. Now it's a problem like I know how to solve. Whenever we do a step in elimination, we eliminate one variable. When there are only two variables, that actually tells us the value of one of our two variables, x or y. In a three-variable system, I now have to solve the remaining system to figure out what either y is or z is, or whichever variables are left. I will now copy down my system, negative 3y plus 7z equals 5, and 4y minus z equals 10, and I can use substitution or elimination to solve this. I'm going to choose elimination, which is also called linear combinations, and I will create an additive inverse for z by multiplying the bottom equation by 7. Now I can continue the process by adding my equations together. I get 25y equals 75, so y equals 3. When we write our solutions, we always write them in alphabetical order. So I will have x, y, z, and so far I found that y is 3. Just like always, I will now take my y equals 3 and substitute it into one of these two equations. Well, it will also work over here. In case I made a mistake in this multiplication step, I should use one of these two equations. I moved my work so that I would have more workspace, and I chose the first equation, negative 3y plus 7z equals 5, to substitute the value y equals 3 in, and I found that z equals 2. Now that I have z and y, I need to go back to one of my original three equations, substitute these values in, and solve for x. When I do this using the top equation, I find that x equals negative 1. So my solution is negative 1, 3, 2. To check this, and you always should because it's so easy to make mistakes with such a large system, you want to substitute x, y, and z into the other two equations here and make sure that they all come out true. As a side note, if in this step here you don't get two different equations and you get something like 0 equals 0 or 0 equals 4, then you know that you have a special case. We won't talk about that today though. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.